Please welcome our final speaker for this evening, former NFL Pro Bowl player, author of Surround Yourself with Greatness, and Associate Athletic Director at Brigham Young University, Chad Lewis. It's, uh, it's great to be here tonight. How about that uh, Boise State game last night? Um, we needed that one uh, big time, so that was very sweet. And it's cool to see the whole Herbert family here. I went to school with them for a long time. Um, I love what Governor Herbert does for our state, and I love that Jeanette wanted to do this for families. So we're all in, in the same boat together. We're parents or grandparents, and we're trying to figure it out and trying to be really good. And I love that you did this, and so I totally support you, and, and I'm here. Um, I've been really grateful to hear each of the presenters. Um, I've sat back there with my wife, Michelle, and my parents, and we've laughed and cried, and it's been really cool. So thank you for doing this. Um, yeah, that's right. My, I have twin boys that are four and a half. They're almost five. Um, they are a lot of fun, and just last week, they told me a, a great joke, so I've got to share it with you. They came home and said, um, Dad, do you love me? And I said, yes, I love you. Will you always remember me? I said, yes, I'll always remember you. Knock, knock. Who's there? You already forgot me. <laughs> um, when I was a senior in high school, I was one of the skinniest football players in this, the history of the state of Utah. I wasn't a very good player. I tried really hard. I wanted to be good, um, but I wasn't. I was on a good team with some good players, and we went all the way to the state championship game. We had a sweet coach, Tom Rabb, who inspired each of us to play well. Um, and it was a really cold day in November. We were playing Alta High School. At halftime, we were down six to zero. And in the second half, it got colder, and the wheels came off our bus. Everything unraveled. And the final score was 40 to zero. We got annihilated. It's uh, still one of my greatest embarrassments. Um, and in the fourth quarter of that game, I got a stinger. Um, a stinger is when you get hit in the head or the neck, and uh, your nerves are like you put your, your whole body inside a light socket. It hurts so bad. And I had one of those. It was wicked. And so I was pulled out of the game, and I was standing there um, just hurting. I was really bummed that we were getting blown out. I was cold. And my dad made his way in the stands of a Rice Stadium to the front row, and he got my attention. He's like, Chad, Chad. And I finally turned around, and I looked at my dad, and, and he said, what's going on down there? And I said something that was, I turned to my dad, and I said, we're getting our butts kicked. That's what's going on. And I looked back at the field, and I was like, didn't you see the scoreboard? I was so mad. And I got home, and my heart's broken. I'm feeling pretty small. And I was sitting at the table with my dad, and he said, you know, I came down to ask you how you were doing. Um, I just wondered why you were not playing. And I just wondered how you were feeling. I felt, I felt that big. I was so embarrassed that that's how I treated my dad. And I was really grateful that he took the time to communicate and do all the things that all these presenters have said tonight to say. All he wanted to say was, I love you. He could care less what the score was. He never, he's never cared what the score was. Um, but the fact that he can't, that he, I'm so glad that he said that at the dinner table. It was probably hard for him to say, hey, he probably wanted to smack me and say, dude, you talk to me like that again, you're never playing football. <laughs> um, but he said it the right way. And he said it the way that still affects me today as, as a dad. So I, was, I was just asking how you're doing. Um, and when I started playing football, my mom would do something each game. She would get into the school. She was on the school board, so she had someone's permission somewhere. And she would put a little sack lunch in my, in my locker. And the sack lunch had a big, giant glass Gatorade. Do you remember those old glass Gatorade bottles? And a big, giant Snickers. 
And I always tried to act like a tough guy when my mom said she loved me, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but some of the things she said were really powerful. She said, Chad, you can run. And I had no self-confidence at the time. I wanted to be a big, strong, muscly guy, and I had zero muscles. I would go lift weights, and it did not work. I would eat food, and it did not work. Um, I didn't shave till I was in Taiwan. Up until that time, I'd shave like this, you know, whoop. Um, so here I am in football, in high school, trying to be a tough guy. And what, what mattered most was, was those cool lunches. And she'd always put a note in there to let me know how much she loved me. Was it the Gatorade? Was it the Snickers? Uh-uh. It was the fact that my mom, she cared about me, and she was trying her best to, to let me know that. And I really appreciated those. I appreciated, her, I appreciated her telling me that I could run and trying to highlight my gifts and my strengths. Because as a teenage boy, I didn't think I had anything going on good. You know, I'd look at the guys that were fast and sweet, and I just thought, man, I'm none of those. And I'm grateful I had a mom that was saying, I love you. When my oldest, our oldest daughter was born, Emily, it was right during my senior football season here at BYU. And we were so pumped to have this, this little girl come. And when she came, she was not breathing. And she was blue. It looked like a little Oompa Loompa. And uh, we didn't hear any noises. We didn't hear any crying. It was really scary. The doctors and the nurses, they pushed the red button and in just out of nowhere came doctors and nurses flying in our room to, to help save this little baby. And the doctor said that the cord was wrapped around her neck. They were talking quick, they were moving quick. And Michelle started crying and the first thing she said was, Chad, will you give her a blessing? And I said, yep. And we thought about naming this girl Samantha and out came Emily. <laughs> Um, so, at the time, um, I blessed little Emily that she would start breathing, and, uh, and Michelle and I both think back of that really scary moment in our lives, and um, it's classic of a mom. All she wanted to do was bless her baby and make everything right. And that's why we're here tonight, to learn about how to be a better parent, better mom and dad, better grandma, better grandpa. We just want to be better. We want to give our kids our love. We want them to feel it um, because they are under attack. This is crazy. And I'll finish with this, this last story. I heard it yesterday from Coach Dave Rose, the basketball coach. He said when he was in Las Vegas, um, they just found out that he had uh, cancer of the pancreas, there was a tumor on his pancreas, and he was in bad shape. They went in, had surgery, they cut out the tumor, and then he went into in the intensive care unit in Las Vegas to recover, and he had a pulmonary embolism. He had a blood clot in his lungs. He said it was the most painful thing ever. He could not breathe, and he thought, this is it. I am out of here. And he said, in that intensive care unit, there were two other people, and they were both really belligerent with the nurses and they were yelling at the nurses and the nurses response was it was so patient so kind and he said the longer he sat there and listened to it he just said I need to be more kind here he is a, a head basketball coach in a division one program and he's used to screaming and hollering at his guys and, and the thing that hit him most in that intensive care recovery unit was I need to be more kind and so his wife Cheryl came in hey how are you doing? And he's feeling really humble. And he said, Cheryl, I need to be more kind. And she's looking at him like, you're losing it. <laughs> are you OK? Um, I'm asking you how you're doing. He's like, no, no, I'm going to make it. But I need to be more kind. And so she went out into the waiting room. The family, his family hadn't been able to see him yet. And she, the first thing she said to her family, he said, was, OK, dad's losing it. He needs a psychologist. Um, and she went back in and they continued the conversation. He said, no, I'm serious. I've been watching these nurses. How awesome they are, they are angels. And uh, I need to be more kind. And the thought of that 
It, uh, it touched me yesterday when I heard him saying that because I need to be more kind. I have seven kids and they do funny kid stuff that I should take more pictures of. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, what are you writing the marker all over our clothes for? Those Sharpies don't come out. Um, so Michelle, I, I'm gonna take out the camera more. I'm gonna take more pictures. Um, but I think the, the whole reason I wanted to, to share my feelings tonight was, as parents, the best thing we can do is let our kids know how much we love them. And how do we do that? I don't know. Uh, you all have your own gifts, your own parenting styles. Um, just do whatever you can to let your kids know that they love them. If it's Gatorade bottles, go buy Gatorade. If it's good to go bars, go buy a million of them. Give them to your kids. If it, if whatever it is, that is the most important thing that we can do as parents, is to let our kids know, let our kids know, no matter what problems they have, that we love them. Thank you, Jeanette, for doing this. <laughs>